Hello and welcome. My name is Father Mario Esposito, and I am a Carmelite friar of the St. Elias Province, New York. You have found your way to the website of the Carmelite Sisters for the Aged and Infirm, or of the Mother Angeline Society, or maybe you have done a Google search for the figure of Mother Angeline Teresa McCrory. I have been privileged for the last 25 years to be working on the cause for the beatification and canonization of Mary Angeline Teresa McCrory. And in 2012, she was declared by Pope Benedict XVI to be venerable. So in our series of videos, we would like to introduce you to the person of Venerable Mary Angeline Teresa McCrory and why she is so significant, why she continues even some 33 years after her death to be researched and talked about and prayed to and her philosophy of care and her charism studied and enfleshed in the work that the Carmelite Sisters for the Aged and Infirm do, along with their fine co-workers, in caring for the elderly here in the United States and in Ireland. Mother Angeline was born on January the 21st, 1893, in Northern Ireland in the village which was then called Mount Joy and is now called Brokaw. She was baptized in the church of St. Bridget the day after she was born and she was named Bridget McCrory, the second of five children. Later, at the time of her confirmation, she chose to add the name Teresa because she was so impressed by the life and the virtues of the great St. Teresa of Avila, Carmelite doctor of the church. Bridget Teresa McCrory was bigger than life in some ways, although she came from a small village in Northern Ireland. In those days, the late 19th century, there were many economic problems and social problems in Northern Ireland and because of that, many people had to immigrate in order to find work. The McCrory's were one of those families. In order to find work, mother and father and children immigrated to Scotland, where they settled in Carfin, part of Motherwell, and Mr. McCrory was able to find work in the steel factory there. The whole family migrated, and Mother Angeline was very close to her grandparents and very active in school and church affairs. Unfortunately, in the steel mill, Mr. McCrory lost his life at a young age because of an industrial accident. But because the family was close and loving, and they had a strong faith, they were able to persevere. Mother Angeline went to school, and she and her other siblings participated in the life of their town. Part of their life were regular visits from the Little Sisters of the Poor, a French congregation of religious who specialize in the care of the poor and the elderly and those who had really nothing. And Mother Angeline met the sisters on a regular basis and was very impressed by their life and their dedication. And so at the age of 19, on February the 2nd, she entered the Little Sisters of the Poor at their home in Glasgow, Scotland. And there she studied and she began her preparation to become a Little Sister of the Poor. Later that year, she was moved to Paris to continue her studies of French and her religious formation. 
And this movement of Mother Angeline from Ireland to Scotland to Paris, and finally to the mother house of the Little Sisters of the Poor in La Tour, La Tour Saint Joseph, were just the beginning of a long series of wolves that brought Mother Angeline to many places, but were all part of God's plan for her. Mother Angeline became a novice at the Mother House during the time of the First World War. In addition to their religious formation and the care of the elderly who were already there, they also had to care for young soldiers who had been injured during the war. Finally, Mother Angeline was professed as a Little Sister of the Poor on March the 19th, 1915. She took the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience to God, and the special fourth vow of the Little Sisters of the Poor, the vow of hospitality, pledging before God to serve in the most charitable way all of the poor that came to their homes and who needed shelter and food and love. By then, Mother Angeline's personality her faith, her indomitable trust in God, even her creativity had begun to manifest themselves. Some months later, Sister Angeline, no longer Bridget Teresa McCrory, but Sister Angeline of St. Agathe, left France for her first assignment in St. Augustine's home for the elderly in Brooklyn, New York, arriving providentially on October the 15th in New York, the feast of St. Teresa of Avila. And there for nine years she labored in the work of the Little Sisters of the Poor with special attention to the care of the indigent poor and the going forth to beg for alms to help support them. In all of this, the grace of God was at work in the life of Mother Angeline, right up till the time that she returned to France in order to prepare for her final vows in 1925. Over the course of our video time together, we will try to learn more about this fascinating woman, how this Bridget Teresa McCrory, now Sister Angeline of St. Agathe, developed and grew to be the religious leader that she became with the new and innovative way of caring for the American elderly in a spirit of prayer and charity and compassion for which she became known. Thank you.